There's a brand new Starlink router coming that's three times faster and dongle free. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of focus and that is it. So good, so clean, refreshing. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about a brand new router. You heard it right, a new router from SpaceX. A brand new router that will increase speed, it will enhance connectivity, as well as no longer require a dongle. The dongleification of everything started, I think, right around Apple times, right? Everything turned into dongles. I'm sick of dongles. I don't want any more dongles. So in simple terms, SpaceX is going from a Wi-Fi 5 router to a Wi-Fi 6 router. And I'm gonna tell you why that's important in just a second. Now, I was reading a filing with the FCC and it was basically SpaceX putting in a request, let's say for a new piece of hardware to be approved. And the hardware is going to be called a UTR231. That's just what their code name is, what they call it, who the hell knows. But anyways, it's a UTR231. It will once again have a port, an ethernet port in the back of it. That would be sweet. No more dongle. And what I would like to also see is a reset button like the old version one had at the bottom that you don't have to plug, unplug, plug, unplug, plug, unplug, like six times and blow up your damn router to get it to factory reset. That's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Anyways, SpaceX put the little button, the reset button back if you're doing another router anyways. Anyways, I digress. So the current router is a Wi-Fi 5 router, which is 802.11 AC, whereas the new Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11 AX. Now people will be like, well, 802.11 AX has been around for years now. And it has, but just like Apple, we see that SpaceX has used older hardware and now they're starting to move back into today or maybe the future, which is 802.11 AX and not AC. So what is the difference between 802.11 AX compared to AC or Wi-Fi 6 compared to Wi-Fi 5? And why should you give a shit? I'm glad you asked. So first of all, you're gonna end up with faster data rates with the 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6. I'll call it Wi-Fi 6 going forward. And the speeds are generally around three times as fast. So if you take a look at the speeds for Wi-Fi 6, they say that the theoretical speeds are up to 10 gigabits per second versus only 3.5 gigabits per second with Wi-Fi 5. So that is a big jump. You're getting close to three three times as fast. Now, the actual speeds that are quoted from SpaceX in this filing are coming in right around 1.2 gigabits per second with 2.4 gigahertz frequency and a whopping 2.4 gigabits per second on the five gigahertz band. Those are some really nice speeds out of this router, according to what they're quoting. Now, it gets complicated on how this happens, but the bottom line is, is the Wi-Fi 6 router that they're using has basically improved signal modulation, let's call it. So this modulation technique will increase the channel's bandwidth, each channel's bandwidth. So that's how it works. Now, another benefit of Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5 is an increased capacity. Now, Wi-Fi 6 provides what they call orthogonal frequency division multiple access or OFDMA. Now OFDMA is basically really what, let's say, distinguishes Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. It is a big, big difference. It's far superior. Now why is that? Well, basically orthogonal comes from the Greek or Latin term, which is orthogneos, which means right angle. Now, why does that pertain? Well, the way it works is that in a frequency spectrum, there are subcarriers, let's say. And in these subcarriers, what's nice about them is there's no overlap. Hence, orthogonal switch is right angle or non-overlapping. It's a means of dividing the available frequency spectrum into these subcarriers. So you don't end up with this overlap or any type of interference. It is far 
superior. Once again, this is a major, major difference between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Now, what is also an improvement with Wi-Fi 6 is they have an improved MU-MIMO, which is your MU-MIMO. Now, remember MIMO, which is multi-in, multi-out, if you guys remember in my last video when I talked about adding that MIMO antenna out there that did an amazing job, right? Go look at a video over here on how I got faster speed with T-Mobile using one of those MIMO antennas. Anyways, MU, which is multi-user, multi-input, multi-output, basically provides a means of data streaming concurrently. So instead of only streaming to one device at a time and putting everyone in a line, let's say, I'm gonna send you data and then I'll send you data and then you data, right? Wi-Fi 6 allows that streaming of data, your MU MIMO, MU MIMO, basically streaming the data concurrently so that all of these devices can get data at the same time. Wi-Fi 5 does not allow that. That is also a big, major, major difference. Now, what is also really powerful with Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5 is what they call a means of differentiating network traffic. And what they use is something that's called BSS coloring which is basic service set coloring. What does that mean? Basically, it tags data. It tags packets with colors. So for example, if I'm sending data packets to this phone, all right, and this is a Wi-Fi 6 and router is Wi-Fi 6, and it says, hey, I'm gonna send you data. But instead of sending the same data to all the different devices and have the data figure out what is its data and what is someone else's data, you have data going everywhere, right? It can send all blue data, let's say all packets that are color-coded with blue, here. That is a lot more efficient, right? So that's how it does it. It uses color coding to color code packets of data and then simply sends the data to that specific device or that specific network or that specific whatever. So it goes in one direction instead of everywhere, right? It's cleaner. It's just a really great way to improve efficiency. And one last thing I'd like to point out about Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 7 is that you're getting a better range, right? More distance as well as more power efficiency. Now, when I say that the range, meaning that how far it can push the signal in your home or office or home business or whatever is slightly further. OK, but what's also very, very important is its power efficiency, the way it does its power saving. Now, when I talk about power saving, I'm not talking about power saving on the router, but saving power on your devices. Now, how it does that is using TWT. Now, TWT stands for target wake time. What this means is let's call it like duty cycling. Think about our dish, right? Our dish is currently at a duty cycle of let's say six to 7%, meaning that it's connected to the satellite six or 7% of the time. Well, SpaceX Starlink is increasing that to about 14 to 15%. So our dish and the satellites will be connected for a longer period of time. This will increase the amount of power used. But the way TWT works is in opposite. It reduces the duty cycle by simply saying, don't listen to me, Mr. Phone, until I tell you to listen to me. Go to sleep. Hence the idea of TWT or target wake time. I will wake you up when you need to be woken up. When I want to send you something, I will send you a wake signal. You'll wake up and start listening to me. Until then, you could kind of relax and not listen to me very much, right? Hence lowering that duty cycle. I think that is really important because you are saving power on every device that's connected to the network not the router, but every device connected. So what does this all translate into? Basically Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 6 is gonna give you faster speeds. It's also gonna give you more capacity. It will also provide you better efficiency with power and everything and data. And finally, greater performance. And that's what a lot of us want. Faster speeds, right? Greater performance. Now I'm sure your next question will be something like, that's all great, Joe. Well, when will this new Starlink router be available? And it's kind of a good question. Do we know a specific date as of yet? And the answer to that is no. But we can use deductive reasoning to come up with a time frame. And that's what I'll do here. When SpaceX filed with the FCC for this new UTR-231 router, the new Starlink router, what they did was initiate what they call a short-term confidentiality request. 
What the hell does that mean? What this does is puts the information under wraps, makes it confidential for 180 days or until the product is released to the market. So using that as kind of a baseline and knowing where we are in the year right now, I would say before Christmas, before the holidays, okay, we should see this new router or maybe even before. And come to think about it, back in March, I did a video and I was talking to you about a bunch of new dish that were being tested. There was like 200 of them. They were testing duty cycles, they were testing shape sizes, smaller sizes, all kinds of stuff, right? And maybe what they'll end up doing is using those that I was talking to you about in March, having the new dish and the new router in a new kit and maybe being released right around the holidays. That's what I'm guessing. Don't quote me on this because I absolutely have not a clue. But once again, using a little bit of, let's call it deductive reasoning, I would say that sounds about fair enough. Now I know there's a lot of you guys that are gonna ask, hey Joe, is there any way that I can get Wi-Fi 6 today? 802.11ax, is it possible? And the answer to that is yes. If you have your current router and you do have a Starlink Ethernet adapter, or as I call it, an Ethernet dongle, if you have that, you can purchase a third-party router. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you three third-party routers that I absolutely love that you guys should check out. Down below, I'll put a link in the comments as well as the description. Go and check those out. You can actually get all of the added benefits of Wi-Fi 6 today by simply circumventing your Starlink router and using that third party. Very, very simple. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. And if you are, click this button here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, don't forget to download my eBooks. They are free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you want more Starlink goodness, go check out my Starlink playlist. I'll put a link here. It'll be at the very end of the video. Click on that. There's about 165, 170 videos just on Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel is all about the why, as I always say. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.